what's your let's get the frick out of here story? Possibly NSW replies. I was out in the bluff country of the upper Mississippi with my dog in the early winter. Was at the base of a cliff and came across a hole about 10 inches across that had some moist, warmish air coming out. I cave sometimes and got excited at the prospect of finding a new, potentially live one. Took my dog home and came back the next day with a helmet, headlamp, and general caving gear. After kicking out the entrance so it was wide enough for me to crawl in I proceeded through sort of an upward crawl space 1-2 featuring tall. About 6 featuring and it opened up into a small chamber and when I shined my headlamp across the floor it was covered in tiny glints. They were the eyes of rattlesnakes. I mean, hundreds of rattlesnakes. I had stumbled across one of their winter dens. I slowly backed out and got the frick out of there. Till Indiana Jones is a redditor. My most recent one was a few months ago. I had just moved up to where I currently live and was out at a party with my roommates. I don't know anyone here so I was on my best behavior. I walk into the kitchen and this kid sprays soda all over me. I keep my cool and walk outside for a smoke. The kid ends up walking outside to smoke a cigarette as well. I tell the kid that I thought it was fricked up that he sprayed soda all over me but said don't worry I know we're all drunk. I laughed it off and jokingly told him that he'll just get him back to make up for it. He apparently took it the wrong way and started waving a gun at me then put one in the chamber. I looked at one of my roommates and gave a holy crap look. I tried to play it off by saying I was going to get another drink. I walked inside gathered everyone I showed up with, called the cab and left immediately. What a mental freak. A few years ago some friends and I were out drinking in downtown Toronto where we all live. We were in a cab going from one bar to another to meet some other friends. As the cab driver pulls up to our destination, my friend, who's sitting in the driver's side back seat, opens his door just as a streetcar, sort of like a mini train for public transit, like they have in San Francisco, is going by. The front corner of the streetcar takes the cab door clean off its hinges. The cab driver and streetcar driver both get out and start screaming at each other. No one seems to realize it was actually my friend's fault. So we drop the cab fare plus a generous tip onto the driver's seat and quietly exit through the opposite side. It was my late junior year of high school and I was at another school's house party. It was all going pretty well except there were a lot of people in the backyard. Eventually one of the neighbors that are family friends come over. It's a husband and wife both in their 40s, in full on suburban warfare mode, put the ganja and alcohol down, we called the cops they are on their way, at the time I was on probation for a minor possession charge so all I needed to hear was cops and I was gone, I left through the front of the house, running like the devil was chasing me, I was out of the house, down the street, and in my car before anybody else had really even moved. I brought my car back to the house to get my friends but the neighbors were blocking the backyard entrance. Impatient and nervous I do the honors. Frick these people they can't make you stay. Let's get the frick out of here. At that moment one of the friends I came with, who was being blocked by the neighbor, decided he had enough. All I see is him come flying through the backyard entrance and knock the pee out of the guy blocking the exit. That opened the floodgates. In about 15 seconds the house was cleared. I'm pulling away as the kid who owns the house decides to say frick it and bail. I decide to give him a fighting chance and pop my trunk. At the time I had an old Ford Explorer. He jumps into the trunk. Slams the door behind him. Screams go. Go. Go and we were gone. Comma I decide to give him a fighting chance and pop my trunk. You are a true hero. I was out for drinks with a friend of mine and a guy from work. The guy from work had a hard time controlling his drinking. So by the time we got to the sake place I told him he was cut off. Falling over drunk. At one point he goes to the bathroom. And when he comes back he is clutching his hand for some reason. I'm like Mike. What happened to your hand is answer. Um. I hurt it somehow. I may have broken the sink too. Oh crap. I like this place. Cheap beer. Sake. And appetizers. So I go check the bathroom. No damage. Hugh. This place is one of those tiny Asian places with two one person bathrooms. Male and female. I sit back down and say Mike. Guy's room looks fine. Maybe you damaged the faucet somehow his answer. No 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 no. I was in the girl's room. So I check the girl's bathroom. Devastation. Apparently he slipped on the wet floor. 
caught himself on the sink, and ripped this entire beautiful porcelain sink, the kind where the water runs around in circles before it gets to your hands, off of the wall. The all that's left is a glued on cross section of a sink on the wall, and a pile of porcelain pieces on the floor with a metal faucet sticking up out of them. Bonus. There is blood everywhere. Even the toilet looks pink. In the words of my friend, it looked like NYC was less 1H that night. Apparently he cut his hand on the sink and it sprayed everywhere as he fell. I tend to Mike's hand, while my other friend starts discreetly mopping up the blood trail that leads from the girl's room to our table with his shoes. A pool of blood is forming under Mike. Meantime the owners realize what has happened, and upon seeing this disaster what do they do? Nothing. Pretend nothing happened. No cops. Just mops. I immediately demanded the check, citing as my reason for leaving that I no longer feel well. Half true. And I do not return to my favorite sake bomb place for months. TL. DR. Drunken co-worker destroys public bathroom creating bloody mess. I discreetly exit. Some friends and I left a club in Boston one night and were pretty well lubricated by this point. Two of my friends were running down the middle of the road looking for an open cab when one of them stops at a minivan and taps on the passenger side window. In the van were four large black men, which my friend slurringly asked to give us a ride. The guy in the passenger seat responded with you but we roll hard. You roll hard at this point my friend screams to me. Yo, IT's cool, my N are gonna give you a ride. At that point I decided it was time to leave so I grab my friend and tell him to keep walking when he yells. But I wanna smoke crack with my N. Then I really decided it was time to leave. To lubricated can also mean drunk. At least. I sincerely hope so. When I was 16, I was at the mall with a friend of mine, who was telling me horrible, horrible stories about her friend. We turned a corner, just as I exclaimed. That's disgusting really, really loudly. All 100 pounds of me suddenly noticed a very tall, very overweight man, sitting on a bench, with his equally overweight child attached to one of those leashes they used to have. Well, he looks me right in the eye, and says, what's disgusting? A and proceeds to stand up and come menacingly at me. I try to explain that it was the story my friend was talking about, but he was having none of it. I booked it out of there really quickly, and still felt really badly about the whole situation, as I could only imagine what he thought I had been talking about. This mental image made my day 100x better. When I was a dumb preteen kid, a friend and I were screwing around and decided it would be fun to throw eggs at cars. We positioned ourselves at the end of an alley that dead ended on a small hill that overlooked a fairly busy street, but didn't connect to it. We figured it was a perfect spot, because we were higher up than the street, and a car couldn't get to us without going around the block. Plus, there weren't any street lights nearby. After hitting a few cars with eggs, we truly unleashed on one car. A couple of eggs in each hand. We probably hit the windshield with 4-5 eggs at once. That's when the red and blue lights on the roof of that car came on. Because there were no street lights nearby, we didn't realize it was a freaking cop car. We hauled butt while the cop car sped around the block trying to get to our alley. Luckily, my buddy's house was just down the alley, and we ducked inside before the cop found us. He circled the neighborhood for half an hour shining his spotlight in two yards. My friend and I were on our way to a different town for some drinks with a friend of ours. It's a drive. Probably like 45 minutes. Anyway, we were passing a joint back and forth by the time we hit the city limits and pulled up next to this guy driving an old RWD V8. You know the one I'm talking about. Brown. Rust spots. Big engine that's not quite in tune but when you put it down the tires on the thing will still scream. It's about 11p and we're parked at a 4 way with woods behind us and the town is in front of us with two streets sitting perpendicular to us. Anyway, he looks over at us and revs the engine. I'm driving a jeep, so I tap the gas and jokingly nod over at him like we're going to do this thing. Stop light turns green and he hits it hard. I stay parked just watching him with my mouth open and the number still in my hand. Dude starts fishtailing all over the road, goes really far right, over Corex left past the double yellow line, almost hits another car, which swerves out of his way, over Corex back over the double yellow line, 
hard, jumps the curb on the right side of the street and plows directly into a storefront's giant plate glass window. Glass just showered all over that car. Dude throws the car in reverse, spraying landscaped bushes all over inside of the building he just inadvertently entered, backs into a street sign, then burns out down the road. The car that had swerved to avoid him whips a UI and chases after him as well. By then the light had turned red and I turned to my friend and honestly asked him if I had hallucinated the entire thing. He said no, that definitely happened. When we left our buddies at about 3 there were cops everywhere, taping off the building and digging around in the bushes. I thought about stopping and telling them I saw what happened but decided it wasn't worth possibly getting arrested. Took me a full minute to get through paragraph 3 and 4, taking breaks to laugh my butt off. A young 16 year old me, invited to a house party in a nearby town. A nice place but the party was populated by a bit more of an alternative crowd than the younger me had grown up with. There was a band playing terrible music in the living room, kids hitting up the pipes in the host's mother's bedroom, nowhere near enough room for all the folk that had decided it was the place to be that Friday evening. Eventually it all spilled out into the streets. A friend who had accompanied me that night is spotted being led by one of the local emo looking girls out onto the field across from the house. He was a perennial geek amongst geeks this guy. This was not his style, but he liked her so we left him to it. We all knew he was about to get lucky, and we were happy for him, albeit in a field in the northwest of England. Ah what a place to lose it. Bless I am. After the fact, we all meet up again upstairs passing around a joint and high-fiving. The next thing we know, music is off, folk are shouting, and footsteps are getting closer. Lots of them. It turned out the girl was supposed to be the lead singer of the band, who in turn happened to be the host, and one of her friends had decided she was being a little bit s. Door swings open, joint drops to the deck. We all turn in shock as a long haired greasy black metal fan attempts to decimate each of us with his eye barnes. We pushed him to the ground, barged my way down the stairs and out of the front door. Having thought we were clear of danger now, we call a taxi to pick us up. Having been quiet for around 5 minutes we decided all is cool. Close call. In actual fact, the offended vocalist had spent his 5 minutes getting troops hunting pack together in a fashion I find reminiscent of Age of Empires army building. They spotted us walking down the road, and decided to make chase. We spotted our taxi and decided to make haste. We made it. Just in time. Safe and the taxi with the locks on door. The taxi driver saw my lips move but couldn't make out what I was saying over all the banging on the windows. He eventually clicked on. In that moment I was Jack F. Bauer screaming. Get us the frick out of here. Edit. The town in question was a rather unheard of place called Colne, East Lancashire. You were a real bro to that guy, man. A lot of my friends would have just left me to be decimated, especially at 16 and stoned. Good guy, you. When I was 19 me and a couple friends decided to go to this bar that opened up not too far away. It was the kind of place that didn't card and we wanted a few drinks. We get there and one of the guys I was with was carrying a pocket knife. The bouncer told him he couldn't take it and so he left it with the girl at the front. Well after an hour or so we start to realize just how shady this place is so we decide to leave. As we are walking out the guy realizes he needs to get his knife back so he goes back inside. My other friend and I are sitting just outside the door waiting when we hear an argument break out about 20 feet away. After some shouting back and forth in Spanish between the parties we hear gunshots. At that point we both rode a run to my truck and duck behind the tires engine. A few seconds later the other guy we were with shows up and we get the heck out. A few months later the whole place was shut down due to a police investigation involving gangs and people being chopped up in the basement. The last sentence tripled the WTF factor. In was 1981 to 1982, a cold night, and me and some punk friends went down to an abandoned movie theater in town. It wasn't a big bijou style place, more like an old metal roofed building with a brick front. There was band playing there, illegally, because the movie theater still had power hookups. There were two main sections, the former theater lobby where everyone hung out and did drugs, and the actual theater part itself, where the band was playing. I never got to the theater part. I mean, I saw it when the double doors would open, where a band was playing and we had a mosh pit going. 
but I hung out with some friends near what used to be the concession stand. At some point, a common friend came to us. Her head gashed and bleeding. Some sucker is slam dancing with a knife, she said. At some point the band stopped playing, and pointed out the jackass cutting people and the crowd descended on this guy and beat the crap out of him in the alley. We had a friend named Kathy who was kind of quiet but always hung out with us. Kathy had a very unique skill. She had a sixth sense to when a party was about to go really bad. She would get this far away look on her face, then snap back to reality and announce it was time to go. And we did. You listened to whatever Kathy's voices told her. And that night, in the middle of a conversation, she got that look. And we went, I o. Cops are coming, she said. Every one of us in our group was under 17. I was 13. Everything was stupid illegal, so we got the heck out of there. We packed into the Oldsmobile station wagon we arrived in, and as we were pulling out onto the main road, a fleet of cop cars turned into the parking lot and blocked anyone from leaving. We missed being blocked in by, maybe 10 seconds? No idea what happened to the people we left behind after that. I arrived home like nothing had happened. I'm imagining your friend Kathy being bit by a radioactive spider that partied a ton and had a little mini beer in one hand. Wandering through the rainy streets of Dundee me and a friend were making our way back home after a local music gig. We started getting abuse from strangers across the road but we thought nothing of it. It was about 10 minutes later when we were cutting across a park that we seen two of them following us I said to my friend, when they get a little closer. Turn round and let's crash them at this point I noticed a swarm of teenagers flanking us with rocks, poles, bottles and belts in hand. We looked at each other, nodded and just fricking ran for the hills. My luck was out as my friend was a lot faster than me and the crowd came roaring after me. I evaded them by throwing myself into a garden and I peeked from the bushes as they all tore past. TL. DR. Got followed by two guys. Decided to fight them but stopped short as we noticed a large group of their armed friends flanking us. Decided silently together to leg it instead. The other day my friend and I were skating a bank at 2am because we were both depressed and wanted to ease our minds. We start looking around the bank out of boredom and notice a metal ladder on the backside. So we climb it and gain access to the very plain and boring roof. We were walking around looking to see if we could skate the gap between buildings when I noticed a cop car across the street. As soon as I looked at the car, I noticed the cop had just shut the door, picked up his radio in a panic, and was staring at us. I look at my friend, both of us are dressed in black shirts jeans, and tell him oh crap, the cop saw us, we have GTFO now. My friend being a little slow to react asked what's the big deal, dumbass. We're dressed in all black hanging out on top of a bank roof at 2am. They think we're robbing the place. Him and I hit the floor. Prone crawl to the ladder. I rip my shirt on a metal snag on the way down. And we run to the car like we're on fire. As soon as we're a block away, we hear like 20,000 police sirens go off behind us in the direction of the bank. My friend and I just maintained a poker face on the drive home. Once I was holding about 3 ounces of weed for the drummer in my band. It sat in my glove compartment all day while I was at work, waiting for its papa to come and sell it. And well after a long day I walk out to my car and just as I was trying to find my keys about 6 cop cars surround me and start screaming for me to get on the ground and to not move. Oh crap oh crap oh crap. I think for sure someone gave me up, or framed me. All sorts of scenes are running through my head as the cops cuff me, sit me on the curb and start looking through my car. Suddenly one of the officers pops his head up and says, This isn't the kid we're looking for, pulls up huge bag of wee she's just trying to sell some drugs. They all laugh and drive away. Apparently a gas station had been robbed not three blocks away, and the getaway driver used a vehicle similar to mine. I drove home at breakneck speeds. Best part? Cops let me keep the weed. Equals D. Six years ago, was at a house party with a bunch of friends. The house was a friend's brother's place who had a roommate that was a neo-Nazi. My friend Shelby Heron referred to as Jack. So neo-Nazi invites his skinhead friends over. And my friend has all his friends over. Party ended up being a mix of skinheads, Mexicans, Native Americans and a few black kids. Too many people show up to the party. Had at least a 100 people. 
Jack's brother and his roommate start to kick people out that they didn't know. Nazi recruits his close friends to help. They started booting all the non-whites because they are skinhead buttholes. Total of 5-7 skinheads had showed up in a group. This one black kid who had known Jack and his brother for a decade ended up getting bounced out the door by the skinheads. Anon, black kid, didn't press the issue and got in his car to take off. One of the Nazis leaned into his window and started shouting screaming in his face and trying to pull him out of the car. Anon pulled out his pistol and shot the skinhead a couple times and tore out. I grabbed my friends and we're in the living room making sure we have everyone. We're standing in the empty living room. I'm holding my girlfriend cause she was PTFO. A short Nazi comes tearing in the back door. Front locked after shooting. And screaming shoot me again mother sucker. Shoot me again yelling racial slurs. Saw my girlfriend. Who was black. And started grabbing at her. I headbutt him. My friends push him away and he runs out the back and jumps the stone wall fence to the left. Left backyard had two boxers and a doberman. They attacked him, all I heard was oh crap my leg and screaming and barking. We jumped over the back wall. I fell into a koi pond and later found a goldfish in my underwear. Neo-Nazi died later that night in the hospital. About 7 years ago I went on a high school trip to NYC. We had an afternoon to explore Soho, and a directive to rendezvous at some landmark at the end of the day. Not being into shopping, especially for overpriced knockoffs, my friends and I went exploring the Lower East Side. We were in search of an underground record shop. None of us had any clue where one might be, but we were sure that the seedier the street, the more likely it would have an independent record dealer. After walking by some incredibly nasty Asian vendors, selling everything from pig feet to fish guts, we saw what we had been looking for, it was perfect, large black sign saying pirate records with a skull and crossbones, boarded up windows. Covered in posters and graffiti. Now we weren't sure it was still an open business. And we were pretty sketched out after seeing pimps. People get mugged. And toothless old ladies peddling pee from garbage bags. So. We elected to amongst us to approach the door. They go up. Open the door. Peek inside. Then immediately turn around and run as fast as they could back towards us. Motioning with their hands that we should all get the frick out of there. After a few blocks of flat out booking it, we get to ask them what exactly they saw. Dude, it was at least a hundred gangster looking Asians. Gambling. They all turned and looked right at us when we opened the door. When I was a senior in high school, these two kids had been talking crap to each other for weeks. Word got around at school that they were finally going to meet up to fight in a grocery store parking lot 5 minutes away immediately after school. So my friend and I get out of class and drive over to the parking lot where there's already a pretty big crowd assembled and one of the guys that was going to fight. We were all standing around waiting for the other guy to show up, and people kept saying things like man, I hope that Mikey doesn't show up and every time Mikey shows up, somebody gets shot. I had no idea who this Mikey guy was. It was my first year at the school, but the rumor was that this guy had shot two people the previous year. So I'm standing there, taking bets on who's going to win the fight, and this short guy comes up to me and says how much money you got I thought he was asking about making a bet for the fight. So I say that depends on who you're taking. In the fight, he didn't like that. So he pulls out a gun and puts the barrel up to my throat and says how about now that I got this .38 to your chin. I'll just see for myself how much you got. I just kind of pause out 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 kind of pause I grab my friend and tell him we've got to get the frick out of here and we go to my car and pull off. I met Mikey. And Mikey didn't like me. Turns out, the other guy never even showed up to fight. His mom found out about it and took him out of school. TL. DR. Got a gun put to my throat waiting for a fight that never happened. Got the frick out. I'm still waiting on my money. B. Spent a semester living in Madrid last year. After a late night out, two of my roommates are walking home and we are approached by a man about two blocks away from our apartment. The guy's pestering us to come to his strip club. Free entry and all. Blah blah blah. I'm exhausted and trying to go to sleep. But one of my roommates thinks we should go in. He tells me our third roommate. OSAP. 
would clearly react in a priceless way, and I'm convinced. I say I will stay for a couple of minutes. At least there was free entry, right? So we get to the place which is right around the corner from our apartment, but underground and we had never noticed it before. There are a few sketchy characters sitting outside the door, but this was not unusual for our neighborhood and we were going to an underground strip club. We walk in and head down a long hallway. I turn a corner and instead of seeing a stage with scantily clad women as I expected, there was just a bar. Sitting at the bar was 6-8 thick women wearing dresses just below the butt. We soon realize this is no strip club but a brothel. Who would've though? Well that was a kind of awkward discovery, but mostly funny. At this point, the three of us are kind of standing in a mostly empty room just staring at the girls and two other dudes in there. One of these guys comes up to us, clearly very inebriated. For some odd reason, he is telling us he wants to buy us drinks. We respectfully decline. But now he insists to come into a room with him and his companion. At this point my SAP roommate tries to slink out and makes a slow break for the door. The bouncer tells him he can't leave and brings him back into where we are. At this point we are beginning to get kind of freaked. This barracho with no teeth and the female start herding us forcibly into a room with only a bed. We knew it was time to go when they started to bring chairs for us to sit in and watch whatever was about to happen. The three of us then bolted for the door, actually running, for fear they wouldn't let us leave. The bouncer was not expecting us and we were able to make a clean getaway. Overall it ended up being very innocent, but we weren't sure if we were going to be robbed, forced to pay for a wage, or forced to watch a toothless man have sex for money. I was coming back from the Atlanta airport on Marta, our sorry excuse for mass transit, after a class trip to NYC. The first stop after the airport some interesting characters came on the train. An obvious pimp holding a strung out H on lockdown. Killer a fellow who was 6 feet 5 300 pounds and was 80% covered with gang tattoos. Killer bumps into my friend and apologizes in the most soft spoken voice I have ever heard. Only reinforcing his killer name as they are always the psycho ones in movies. The pimp gives the H a crack pipe and she smokes it right there on the train. Then killer receives a phone call. The ringtone was like a rolling stone I crap you not. Listens to the other person on the line and says smoke that N and hangs up. They get off after a little bit and then this really shifty guy gets on and sits next to one of my teachers. A really funny older lady. She's sitting back to back with another person. The sketch guys leans over her and asks the guy behind her how much you got a pound. Then they exchange backpacks and get off the train. Then, one stop before ours, the doors open to the train and a teenage black guy falls into the train bleeding saying he was stabbed. We hit the emergency stop and call the police. We ended having to stay there till 1am answering questions about what we saw. I just wanted to get out of there so bad. For your information the guy was still conscious when the paramedics left with him. No idea if he made it or not. Roughly 15 years ago, at a party in the sticks, mostly teenagers to early 20s, there was a group of about 10 of us and for whatever reason the majority of the people there did not like us and made that clear. Weird Springfield versus Shelbyville rivalry type thing. They had two kegs on the front porch. We all realize that we won't have any fun and decide to leave. On the way out we see keg number 2 untapped and on ice. A friend of mine and I say to each other these guys are dongs and we should snatch up this other keg. We need some sort of distraction. Within 10 seconds and as if on cue, a drunk girl parked in the yard backed her car at high speed into the side of another car. Super loud crash and the crowd of dongs gathers around the scene. We say, well, here's our distraction. We grab the keg. Walk it calmly behind the gathering of dongs. Stick it in the back of a friend's truck. Let's get the frick out of here. A keg party in Springfield the following night. When I worked in radio I took a friend to a show at one of my client's venues. He was kind of a sketchy dude. But we kept him around because he was also kind of fun to party with. We're at this gig and he comes back from the bathroom and is like. Dude, we gotta go right now. I'm rather annoyed because I wanted to see the band as I knew them and I really dug the place. But okay, whatever fine, we'll leave. As we're leaving, about halfway to my car I hear from behind me, you suckers get back here right now, and I look behind me, I see not only the owner of the venue, my client, but also a very large bouncer running full speed towards us both. I immediately am thinking, 
Oh frick. What did he do? The owner informs me that my buddy had completely demolished the bathroom. Broke a window. Tore the paper towel dispenser off the wall. Broke the mirror. Broke the toilet. And ripped down the lighting. Needless to say, they are not impressed and neither am I. I'm apologizing like frick to my client. I have no idea why the frick he did this whatsoever. He didn't seem that drunk or upset at all. Now what I know about my buddy is that he would always carry around $1000 in cash on him at all times. Don't know why. Probably drugs. So I tell my client. As his monster of a bouncer is penning him to a wall. I'm so freaking sorry. But I know he has a shitload of cash on him. Tell him it's going to cost triple what it will to fix the bathroom. He's game. And he approaches my buddy and tells him and his beastly bouncer what's going to happen. So my buddy opens his wallet and hands the dude like $900 and my client says, My man here, me, wants to see the end of the show, so you're going to sit your freaking butt down right here, and my bouncer is going to watch you until the end, or we're calling the cops. The client gave me free drinks for the rest of the show even, because I had a good relationship with them, and he knew I had nothing to do with it. I stayed for over 2 more hours, because frick him. If it weren't for me knowing the owner that dude would have gotten severely beat down, without a doubt. I enjoyed the show and took a taxi home without him. Best part was when I went to pick up my car the next day I met up with the owner to apologize profusely again. And he told me that they were planning on remodeling the bathroom soon anyway. Best concert ever. Seems like a theme developing is drunk people who can somehow annihilate bathrooms. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.